You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. Today is Tuesday of Holy Week, and today is also the feast day of St. Teresa of the Andes, a young woman who answered the call to religious life and became a saint in Chile. Now, all week on the Catholic Sprouts podcast, we are talking about the events of the final day of Jesus's earthly life, because remember, according to the Jewish understanding, a day began at sunset. And so yesterday we talked about the events right after sunset, the Last Supper, where Jesus instituted the Mass, and also where Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Today we're going to talk about the next event, which is when Jesus took his closest followers. He went to the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. This is night, probably very late at night. And Jesus, being fully aware of all that would happen in the remainder of this day, aware of his friends that would betray him, aware of the Jewish leaders that would hand him over, and aware of all of the excruciating pain that he would suffer before his death, aware of this all, he went to pray. Now, there are some some very important things here. So Jesus went to a garden. Think for a second. Do you know of any other super important stories from the Bible that took place in a garden? Think all the way back to the beginning. Yes, in a garden, Adam and Eve were placed. They were super happy and totally fulfilled, had just one rule, but they chose to be disobedient they ate from the tree that God had told them not to, and they, cre- they, co- they committed the first sin, the sin that grew and festered over all of these generations, and the reason why Christ needed to come to earth and save us, that all started with that first sin. So here again, we are in a garden, and this man, Jesus Christ, who's also fully God, he is being being asked to be obedient once again, but God is asking him to be a lot, to do a lot more than just not eat an apple from a tree. He's being asked to be obedient unto death, to accept all the sin and all the suffering out of love for us, for people that will betray him and abandon him. And it is difficult. We know for sure that Jesus is fully human when he is in the garden because he is in anguish. Some gospel accounts say that he sweated blood. He was so tormented. And yet in the end, even though his disciples are asleep, they refuse to sit with him in this first holy hour and support him in prayer. Even though he has been abandoned, even though he can look down the hill and see the torches of the high priest guards coming to arrest him, even still, he says to God, not my will, but thy will be done. And then at that moment, everything happens. Judas, who has been paid to betray Jesus, enters the garden. And what does he do? He approaches this man whom he has seen perform miracles, who has taught him, who just gave him the Eucharist and washed his feet. He goes up to this man, the Savior of the world, and he kisses him. Now, why is that important? It's important because it shows us that love from Judas in this moment is a lie. Jesus, who is true love, true unending love, is presented with, from Judas with love that is a lie. Now, from this moment, of course, the high priest guards take Jesus. What's important is that there are other points in the gospel where The Pharisees have tried to arrest Jesus, but they were unable to. Some accounts say that Jesus simply passed through their midst. 
and it's clear that here, Jesus, of course, is God. He's worked miracles. He's walked on water. He could have evaded the high priest, but he allowed himself to be arrested. He even told his followers to put their swords away and to let this happen. Of course, at this moment, all of his followers abandon him and he is alone and he is taken to the high priest. Now, all week, we are going to talk about the three major points that Jesus was betrayed. The first betrayal, which we see here, is a betrayal of his followers. Judas betrays him, but we also know that all of his other followers betray him too. They flee, they run away. Before in the gospel, they had told Christ, Christ, we will die with you. Bring us with you to Jerusalem. But here, when the high priest guards arrive, they run away. The final betrayal of his friends will be done by Peter. So after they arrest Jesus, they, of course, take him to a kangaroo court. Now that means it's not a fair trial, that these people have already decided that Jesus is guilty. We hear in the gospel that there is false testimony, that people are there just making up stories so that Jesus can be found guilty. Ultimately, they convict him because he claims to be the Messiah. And they say that is blasphemy. That is a terrible lie involving God. Now notice the high priest, notice the time. The last supper was right after sunset. Jesus goes into the garden in the middle of the night, and then he is arrested and he is on trial before the high priest. So they are trying him in the middle of the night. Maybe it's 2 a.m., Now, why would they do that? Why would they all be up in the middle of the night having a trial for Jesus? Because they're scared of what the rest of the Jews will do. Jesus has been publicly working miracles in Jerusalem for about a week now. Many people believe that he is the Messiah. They're worried about a revolt. So they decide that they need to arrest him secretly. They need to have a trial and establish that he is guilty and have all of the evidence so that when they go to the crowds, when they go to the people, they can easily convince them that Jesus is dangerous. So this is what they do. Now, the final betrayal of Jesus's followers happens from Peter. Peter, who ran away in the garden, seems to have followed Jesus to the court of the high priest, but he's too intimidated to actually go inside. So instead, he stands outside and is warming himself by a fire. And it is there that a maid of the high priest recognizes him as a follower of Christ. Now, remember that Peter came from Galilee. He's not, he didn't grow up in Jerusalem. So he would have had a very heavy Galilean accent. When he spoke, people could tell that he wasn't from Jerusalem. And they knew that a lot of Jesus' followers were from Galilee. So right away, she knows this about him, but he denies it. He denies it three times, and he even swears and curses. Now, the gospel account makes it clear that Christ can hear him do this, can see him as he does this. And he looks at him during his final betrayal, and Peter knows that Christ knew all along that he would betray him. Now, of course, there's a lot left to talk about the trial before Pilate and Herod, the crucifixion and death of our Lord. But for today, Sprouts, my challenge for you is the same as yesterday. Let's practice that simple prayer that we repeat in the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And let's say it three times. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. This show is a production of the Spoke Street Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.